If you're a bit skeptical of whether dark matter actually exists or not, you're gonna like this video. Because a research paper came out this month claiming to have found strong evidence for an alternate theory of gravity called MOND. One that doesn't need dark matter to explain our observations of the universe and instead just tweaks the equations for gravity slightly. However, the test that this paper by Che uses has been done before a few times with wildly differing results. Some in favour of this alternate theory and some against. But this specific paper by Che seems to have made a lot of noise online recently because the evidence was so strong in favour of this alternate theory, Mont. The question is, how legit is this claim? So, in this video, we're going to chat first about what this alternate theory of gravity, Mond, actually is. Two, how you test the theory with binary stars in Gaia data. Three, the results that have been found so far, including this new paper by Che. And finally, four, what to do if all of the results are differing and how we can actually get reliable results that we can trust. So let's start with number one. What actually is MOND? Well, it stands for Modified Newtonian Dynamics, essentially taking Newton's equations for gravity that we all learn in high school and tweaking them ever so slightly when objects have very small accelerations due to gravity. Now, this is not the current most accepted theory of gravity. That falls to Einstein's theory of general relativity that tells us that gravity is caused by massive objects curving the space around them. And the more massive the object is, the more extreme the curvature. At every test of general relativity that we've ever done, it's passed with flying colors, with the prediction from the theory matching our observations of the universe, hence why it is the most widely accepted theory of gravity. But one of the consequences of that being our current best theory of gravity is that it tells us that there's more mass in galaxies and galaxy clusters and the universe as a whole that we can actually see and receive light from. And even if you account for all the things that don't give off their own light, things like planets and black holes and dust, it's still not enough to account for all of that missing matter. There's still six times as much matter that we can't see, dark matter, than there is normal matter. And that's sort of been the accepted theory since around about the 60s or 70s. But we still don't know what this dark matter is actually made of. Particle physicists have not found any evidence for a different type of particle that could have the behavior that we observe in dark matter. So a number of alternate theories of gravity have been proposed that don't need dark matter on these larger scales to explain our observations of the universe, with varying levels of success. Now the most well-known of these, and perhaps the most studied of these theories, is MOND, which was proposed back in 1984 by Bekenstein and Milgram. And like Einstein's general relativity, it too reduces back to Newton's equations in this sort of everyday regime. But the equations look different when the acceleration due to gravity start to get very small. Like, for example, on the edges of galaxies where stars are orbiting far from the galactic center and don't rotate at the speeds that general relativity predicts. So that's why we infer dark matter for general relativity. MOND, however, with its tweaked equations for gravity, does predict the right rotation speeds for stars on the edges of galaxies. Don't declare success just yet, though, because there's lots of other areas where MOND's predictions haven't been so successful. If you want a more in-depth look into this, there was a fantastic review on all the tests that have been done for MOND from Bannock and Zhao in 2022, which covers everything in the kitchen sink, which I'll link below if you want to read. But for now, let's move on to part two. How do you test MOND using binary star systems in the Milky Way? Now, people are constantly looking for new ways to test all of our different theories of gravity, including general relativity and MOND. And back in 2012, Hernandez, Jimenez and Allen proposed testing it with pairs of stars, binary systems that were orbiting each other at large enough separations, so around about 10% of a light year or so, so that the accelerations of the two stars due to gravity would become low enough that you'd end up in this regime where MOND says the equation should be different from what general relativity predicts, which in this case just reduces to the classic Newton equation. And the thing is, even though you're only testing MOND here on small scales, you know, it's just a fraction of a light year, you know, in our own galaxy, the Milky Way, 
that would still then be applicable to galaxy wide scales at these low accelerations too, where we think dark matter then starts to dominate, at least according to general relativity. So what you have to do is observe a load of pairs of stars and track their positions and their velocities relative to you in all three dimensions. So you're talking up, down, forwards and back and left and right as well. And then you can take those velocities of the two stars in a pair and then work out a model for how they're orbiting each other and get their orbital velocity around each other, which is plotted on the y-axis here, and see how that changes compared to their separation between the two stars, which is plotted on the x-axis. In general relativity that reduces to just Newton's equations, you should just get this diagonal red line here and all the data should follow that. But what Mond predicts is that at large separations, this should diverge with larger relative velocities than predicted by Newtonian gravity. The problem is back in 2012, the data we had to do this was a little bit crap. It came from ESA's Hipparchos mission, which ran through the 90s. But you can see all you get is just scatter, right? You've no hope of seeing a trend in this data to be able to do the test accurately enough. And that's because the velocities and positions of the individual stars coming from the Hipparchos mission weren't accurate enough. Probably also that you need more binary pairs of stars as well in your sample, but also the velocities and positions you measure are relative to you. You've got to then put that into a model of the two stars orbiting each other. And to do that, there's a lot of unknowns. The first being you need an accurate enough mass of both stars, which you can get it from the light, but you also need to know something called the inclination. So what angle are you actually seeing the two stars orbit each other at? Plus you also need to know the eccentricity of the orbit which is whether the orbit of the two stars is a perfect circle or if it's more of an oval shaped and also how much of an oval shaped it is. You don't know either of those two things, the inclination or the eccentricity. So that adds a lot of uncertainty into the velocity, the relative velocity of the two stars as they orbit each other that you then plot on this graph and it causes a lot of this scatter. Fast forward now to 2013 and the launch of ESA's Gaia mission, which spent five years studying the precise positions and velocities, colors, brightnesses of over a billion stars in the Milky Way. Monitoring each star 70 times in that time frame and finally giving us the precision data that was needed to do this test of MOND with all the binary stars in the Gaia dataset. So the first paper to appear doing this was this research paper by Hernandez, Cookson and Cortez from 2022, which looked at how the velocity changed with separation in the Gaia data. And you can see there's still this huge scatter because even though your data is more precise, the inclination and the eccentricity are still unknown. But Hernandez, Cookson and Cortez concluded the data didn't fit the Newtonian prediction, but also didn't fit the Mond prediction either. Then in early 2023, Petordis and Sutherland did the same test again with Gaia data and found that the standard Newton theory of gravity fit the data best, not Mond. And then later in 2023, Hernandez once again does this test using Gaia data, but this time apparently using the data more rigorously and finds that Mond fits the data better. Which then brings us to this research paper by Che that made all those headlines this month, who once again used the Gaia data to do this test, plotting the separation against that calculated orbital velocity of the two stars, shown here in the gray points. And then the red dashed line shows the typical Newton prediction of what you should expect. But then the red dotted line shows you what Mond predicts because of that deviation due to the smaller accelerations at large separations. And just note how small that difference really is between the Newton prediction and Mond compared to all the scatter in the data. But if you average all of those orbital velocities in bins of separations, you then get the black line then, which Jay argues that at smaller separations, you know, with the larger accelerations of the stars, the Newtonian prediction matches. Whereas at the larger separations, when you reach that lower acceleration regime, the data matches the Mond prediction best, specifically a version of Mond known as AQUAL. And they say that this is a statistically significant result, quoting a value of 10 sigma. That means that they're claiming that there is under a 1 in 10,000 trillion chance that this is just a statistical fluke in the data. Now, my first thought was, you cannot claim that high of a significance when you've got 
that much scatter in your data because of all of these unknowns of inclination and eccentricity. Their argument against that is that if you simulate a load of binary stars with Newtonian gravity, you get a very similar scatter, but the average of the data now matches the Newtonian prediction in that red dashed line. So they're saying that you can still make this claim despite all the scatter in the data and all the unknowns in the model. So what we've got is these four separate papers, all using the same data, but claiming wildly different things, Mond or Newtonian gravity. And I think a lot of the coverage that popped up online around the Che paper just missed a lot of this context and nuance, which is why I wanted to cover it on this channel. So where do we go from here with all of these differing results? Well, there is another way that you can analyze this data, which takes into account the fact that there are all of these unknown variables in your model and can account for that. And it's called Bayesian statistics. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail here on what this method entails, but essentially it is a way of saying, how likely is something given that I already know something else. It's like a conditional probability. So for example, if I flipped a coin 10 times, I then wanna know how likely is it that that coin is biased, that it's weighted in some way, given the fact that I know that I've just flipped seven tails and three heads. You can then fit a model of that with as many parameters as you like, including all of the unknown ones. And at the end, you do something called marginalization, where essentially you take all of the uncertainties on all of the unknown parameters and fold it into the parameter you're actually trying to measure and find out, you know, how likely is it that this parameter is this value versus this value. For example, what is the slope of this line on this plot of separation versus orbital velocity of the binaries? Now I have heard some gossip from people who work in this research field of testing these alternate theories of gravity. And they say there is a paper coming that does this different analysis, this Bayesian statistics analysis of the Gaia data to test MOND in this way. Still in the referee process, but it should be out by the end of this year. And there's a lot of buzz about this paper, not least because it's actually from the research group that Che used to be a part of, but split away from to write their own research paper. And the buzz started after this conference held back in June in St. Andrews, when this work was presented in this session here. And you can see from the titles here, which way this test might have leaned, including this talk from Bannock, who wrote that review paper recently on all the evidence for Mond, but now seems to be arguing for Bayesian evidence against it. But we will have to wait for that research paper to be published to find out what they've actually found. And of course, once it is published, I'll cover it in a video on this channel. So make sure that you're subscribed and got the bell on so you don't miss out on that one. And if you want updates from someone actually working in this research field, I can highly recommend Professor Stacey McGaw's blog, Triton Station, which I'll link in the video description down below. So we're in both an exciting and yet confusing time when it comes to theories of gravity. You know, an alternate theory of gravity would definitely help with the problem of dark matter and that we still don't know what it actually is yet. But extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And I don't think that we're at that point yet, given the different results that have been claimed all using the same Gaia data. All we can do, you know, is just grab the popcorn and enjoy the science drama as science history literally plays out in front of us in real time. If you're a bit skeptical, skeptical? <laughs> First word, oh, try again. Space is hard, words are harder. I do enjoy the word mond, but I feel like every time I say it, it has to be said in sort of the way that you sort of anim, anim, anomatopoeially say the word bong is kind of like bong. Like it has to be like mond. I don't know why. I just, I can't explain my brain, can I? Because even though your date is more precise, the inclination and the eccentric, eccentricity, 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 uh, I don't know. <laughs> now I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the actual sort of statistical method here for those who aren't from, what the frig was that? Oh my God, my heart leapt out of my chest, my lipstick just fell out of my pocket, but like hit all the like springy things on my chair, you know, like all the levers that change the height, like on the way down, whew, literally jumped out my skin. <laughs> I'm gonna go for a lipstick top it while we're here though. That's probably the universe telling me that I looked pale. I gave so many signs, so many 
shines. Do you think that's like dark matter just seeing that as like, I gave so many shines. <laughs>